Hey everybody, I have a special announcement and disclaimer before we get into this piece. Recently I was on a plane and I watched the new Godzilla movie. I'd been dying to watch it because everyone said it was so good and I was very disappointed. I was disappointed because as I watched it, every time somebody moved their mouth, the words matched up perfectly and that is not Godzilla to me. So I decided to do a review that is in true Godzilla style. End of disclaimer. Back. Mr. X with the Extreme Channel here, and it is Friday night. Probably not when this airs, but you can pretend it's Friday night, and if you don't work on the weekends, you don't have to go to work tomorrow. Mr. X said so. I have a very long-awaited piece, and it's not just long-awaited because a lot of collectibles like this are, but I had a lot of problems with the distribution, and I'm ready to bash them. And people like to hear that kind of stuff, so stay tuned. Mr. X with the Extreme Channel, extremely excited as I always am. That's why I don't wear pants. And this is a life-size bust of T-800 Terminator from Terminator 2. Arnold, the governator. And I'm just ecstatic to have him. I bought him as an impulse a long time ago. And I wasn't sure where to buy him from. So I purchased from, uh, so first of all, he's manufactured by Queen Studios. And this is my fourth Queen Studios piece. I also have the uh, Queen Studios Iron Spider-Man I've reviewed, the Iron Spider bust. I have the Queen Studios Heath Ledger Joker bust. I've reviewed that as well. And I also have one I haven't reviewed, a Queen Studios Crocodile vs. Anaconda diorama. So as you may or may not know, in my theater room, I have a wall full of busts and specifically villains or creature busts. While he doesn't necessarily fall into that category, he's close enough. And I do have some other Terminator pieces. I used to have the Cool Prop Sideshow T-800 Endoskeleton, uh, as you see here. Unfortunately, there was an earthquake in California, which is a thousand miles from me, and that same time the earthquake happened, it fell down. It wasn't an aftershock, so now it's just a pile of rubble, which is going to be really close to him, so it still kind of goes with it. This is what it looks like now. Then I also have a custom T-1000 bust uh, that I privately commissioned that's been in the works for about six months. And, uh, you know, here's a really raw photo of it. So as I said, he's manufactured by Queen Studios. Queen Studios is fairly new to the statue game. They, they come from uh, movie props is what they were really big into before they jumped in. And they've jumped in kind of... Uh, <laughs> that was a, that's what he said. I was going to say they jumped in really hard, but that's what she said joke. But anyway, they jumped in really hard, and they primarily are doing busts with a few little offsets of other things. And they found this is kind of what people are loving. I also have quite a few other Queen Studios busts on order. Not quite a few, but, but a couple. So first, I have their uh, Thanos bust. I also have their Wonder Woman bust. And then I have their Loki bust, which is probably the next one coming out. And originally, when Queen Studios started distributing their stuff, they actually don't distribute their stuff. So you have to get it through a third party. So I found this place called Queen Studios Distribution. And they actually distributed my very first piece from them, the Anaconda vs. Crocodile uh, diorama. And it came great, no problems, no issues. So I purchased this from them, and I put down a deposit of $800. And in June of this year, they said, okay, it's time to ship. Send us the rest of the money and shipping money. So send us another 2800 or however much it was. So I did, and a few weeks went by, and I messaged them, where is it at? Oh, it'll come later this month. This was July. Nothing. End of July, I messaged them, where is it at? It'll come at the beginning of August. Great. A couple weeks went by, messaged them, where is it at? We'll know by August 21st. As you can imagine, a pattern happened there. Well, then I was in at New York Comic Con on December 2nd or 3rd, what, or, or October 2nd or 3rd. Shit, I'm a time traveler. And they messaged me, and they said, hey, we have a great opportunity for you. 
if you're at New York Comic Con, you can take the one there and get a discount. I'm like, fantastic. Let's talk about that. What kind of discount are you willing to offer me? They said, you will not have to pay for shipping. I was like, no shit, Sherlock. I would take it with me. What other discount? Well, you won't have to pay for taxes. Okay. Well, it's a piece that you guys use at cons and it's been previously displayed. Anything else? That's a good deal. If you don't want it, we'll give it to someone else. Well, I'll give it to someone else. New York Comic Con went by. Then a few weeks later, they messaged me and they said, we finally have one. We're ready to go. You have two choices. We can declare $824 or $3,000. Well, if you have stuff shipped to America, uh, whatever they declare, anything over $800, you're taxed on. I don't know why they couldn't declare $799 because then I'd have no taxes, but it was $824. So I chose 824 because I was only taxed 60 bucks, which I had to pay DHL, where I would have had to pay them about $250 for the full amount. They also made it very clear, if anything's broken on it, that it's at my own risk. Well, unfortunately, we did have a broken piece. So check out this picture right here. But it looks pretty clean, But it's so I can fix it uh, with just some glue. But it's very discouraging when you buy a $3,000 piece and it's broken. Speaking of $3,000, this actually cost $2,880 was the retail price on that. And they only made 99 of them, so it's a very rare piece, and I'm ecstatic I got it because Terminator is timeless. I don't think Dark Fate, the newest movie, has come out, but I will definitely see it. Um, huge Terminator fan. I grew up with it. Uh, Terminator 2 was one of the first R-rated movies I went to see, at least R-rated movies that drop the F-bomb all the time. And Terminator 1, I grew up, I think I probably saw it. It came out in 84. I probably saw it when I was about eight, nine years old. And uh, not in the theater, but at home. And I was just equally impressed. And Terminator 2, some of the coolest special effects of the time. Uh, it was just a fantastic movie. And who doesn't like Arnold Schwarzenegger? No shit. So I'm in love with this piece, without a doubt. So that's why I purchased him. I'm ecstatic to have him. He's going to be awesome in the Extreme Collection. You probably just saw a transition there, and that's because people are actually watching me film this live. So they're watching me. And there's 93 people watching me right now. Creepy. Because they know I don't have pants on. Anyway, uh, one really... Let's do the dimensions on him. Let's do that. And move my bang bang. Make sure I don't spill my bang bang. He is uh, about 30 inches tall, deep. I'm going to say he is 11 and a half inches deep. And wide is probably the base. He's right at 14 and a quarter inches. If you want to know in centimeters, then you shouldn't be. I had a really smart joke. You guys are really fucking me up. Sorry, there was another transition because, as I said, I have ninety now 92 people watching me, and it's making me nervous. So if you didn't like those transitions, just hold on because the review is about to get a whole lot worse anyway. But anyway, let's jump into the concept and design of this piece. And with concept and design of a bust, it's hard to talk about it because it's a bust. He, he's not in a position. He doesn't have arms. Uh, he doesn't have legs. He doesn't have balls, as somebody asked earlier on who's watching me live. But let's just jump into it. So he does have a very cool base. One of the things I like about Queen Studios, for example, their Joker base that I have, it really ties to the character. So this looks like something Skynet related. It looks like, uh, whether it's a factory or a ship, really reminds me of Terminator of Salvation. And it does have the nameplate in the front. And I normally don't like nameplates, but this is pretty badass. And it's interesting. It says 3D, which we're going to talk about in a second. But moving on up, they did Terminator battle damage. So this is later in the movie. This is probably uh, after he took his little tumble, after the they froze T-1000 in the smolting plant. I think that's what it's called, smolting plant. And very stoic, very scary. Their pieces typically don't have a lot of expression on them, and I think that's a safe way to do it because more buyers will appreciate it. If you go too far in either direction, people will complain. And he's torn up and he's bloody. The blood looks real. We're going to see that in the close-ups and the paint and sculpt. Very, very cool. Now, back to the 3D. Universal Studios used to have a live show called Terminator 3D or something around this range. And that was fantastic, especially when it came out like in the 90s. And they, played, they had it for about 25 years or so. 
I don't know the exacts, but I've, I've seen it many times. So I don't know if this is in relation to that or if it's 3D because the statue is 3D. Maybe somebody who is more uh, knowledgeable about this piece can actually fill me in in the bottom or in the comments. I don't want to be filled in in the bottom. <laughs> she might have said that. I don't know. That was a pretty good one. Did you guys like that one? I did. Another transition. Cool thing is my editing software, which I use iMovie, if you guys are curious, has like 30 transitions you can choose from. And nobody really notices which one you use. But uh, anyway, let's dive, before we dive into the paint sculpt, one other really cool design feature this guy has is he actually lights up via AC adapter. So here are some pictures of him lit up via AC adapter. Just a really cool feature. And I'm not a big light up fan by any means, but it's nice that they have this. It, it just gives that statue a little extra oomph. Helps you appreciate the fact that you just dropped three grand on this. Another transition to talk to the other people. If you missed this live uh, online feed, it probably wasn't that good. But we have, oh, numbers are going back up. Anytime I do live feeds that aren't scheduled, like if they're not a chat with someone else, I don't keep them uh, online. So you gotta catch them while they're there. Swear to God, his eye just moved. But let's get into the uh, actual review of the paint and sculpt. And as always, we're going to start at the bottom and kind of make our way up. And there's a lot of different things going on here because he is uh, half uh, flesh and half machine. Starting at the base, as usual, first of all, I love the color on this. It is a, a wash. It almost looks like a child painted it when you first look at it. But I think it's very intentional to give it this kind of effect with the different grays and blacks that they use. And it looks washed out in a very cool way. Again, it's, it's what I said kind of in the intro or in the uh, background inf information. It looks like it's part of the future. It's kind of old, been through a lot of battle. And here on the front, you see the nameplate I was talking about, T-800, which is his model number, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day 3D. And yeah, I don't know if you can tell in the pictures or not, but the letters are raised up. So they're not engraved, whatever the opposite of engraved, they're upgraved. I don't know what that word would be. And then the bottom is just kind of this rectangular base with two uh, levels. So I call this the sub base here. Again, the same coloring, not really a lot going on until you get to the back. There's two little portals that look like pipes that it's coming out of. And right above that, you see where the AC adapter and the power button is. But there's also these other pipes. This is what was broken that I told you. And it maintains that same color scheme throughout. And these almost look like thrusters or something of that nature. And then behind it, you have some dials and switches. Almost looks like a furnace. Like I said, very futuristic. Kind of reminds me of the factory that she crushed the T-800 in in Terminator 1. When she said, you're Terminator fucker. One of the best lines. And the sides are very similar too. A lot of weird stuff going on. Looks like panels and... Uh, uh, hoses and tubes in that same metallic color looks really really cool and I would in this statue I would call this the after sub base and then you have another base kind of on top of that that uh, the T-800 is actually sitting on so it is two separate pieces I forgot to mention that the base is one piece then Arnold is another and then let's move up to Arnold first I want to look at his jacket a few people ask is this pleather it is real leather to my knowledge and it's really cool because when I was pulling him out of the uh, box, I thought he was torn or missing some buttons, but that's a weathered effect. So they actually ripped the buttons off, but it looks good. I mean, it's a mixed media leather jacket. Not going to spend too much time on it. And then let's look at his uh, chest here. First of all, one thing I, I really remember more so from Terminator 3 is his chest, uh, when his armor shows, it actually juts out. So it looks like if he actually had skin over it, it'd look really funny, but it looked just like this in Terminator 3. So I would tend to think that this is uh, correct. This is done correctly. And it's a different metallic color than the bottom part. It's uh, a lot more silver with flecks of uh, black all throughout it. And you see kind of a uh, Allen wrench portal right in the middle uh, assumably that's where his power cell is, which we actually don't learn until the next movie. But then look at the skin. So first, uh, the blood around him is, it's fantastic. It looks disgusting. It reminds me of like a latex uh, haunted house horror type setup. I'm not big into Halloween costumes, 
Uh, however, I did miss out on some, one of the Jack of the Dust costumes I wanted. Go check their out their website. But just look at this. I think the color is good. They use different shades of red. It's not what blood would look like in real life, but it's what blood would look like in the movies, which is typically most of us don't see this kind of carnage in real life. So then you see a little bit of the skin color here, and it's very dirty, uh, which we're going to focus more on that around his neck and head because we have a much better view. But you see his torn shirt. Again, there's uh, signifying bullet holes, and right underneath that are uh, bullet wounds, a couple of those. And I like the fact that there's just two or three, so it's not too many. It's not overpowering. Reminds me of the scene when Sarah was pulling out his bullets, asking if, uh, will these heal up? But it's his shirt. We're not going to talk too much about it. Then I'm going to move to his portrait. So let's look at his skin. First of all, one of the things you're going to see on the skin is you're going to see flecks of hair because it actually is real hair. So just like everyone's hair, sometimes it sheds and uh, a little bit is falling off here and there. But I think that adds to the realism. They use medical grade silicone, which is supposed to last, I, I think, 20 to 50 years or however long. Someone can uh, put it in the comments what it is, but it looks like real skin. It's fantastically done. The sculpt of his neck looks like a real neck, kind of has your classic uh, male V-neck with the Adam's apple at the front. And you see some veins in there, which, as you guys know, Arnold and the Terminator were very buff. And they used some cool paint to show that uh, blue aspect uh, of the veins, kind of like you see in sculpted statues sometimes, which obviously this is sculpted too. And to the touch, if you're wondering, the skin is very uh, sticky and uh, moist. <laughs> There's some jokes in there. And here you see, I wouldn't say they're bullet holes, they may be, but they're very small bullet holes, but a lot more uh, battle damage. And interestingly enough, you really can't see metal underneath here because his uh, endoskeleton neck is very skinny. So there'd be a lot of muscle and tissue. So it looks like human damage. You don't see really en any endoskeleton in the damage of his neck. And let's move up to his portrait, and I'm going to divide this into two portions. First, his uh, human-like portion uh, with a little bit of battle damage, and then his endoskeleton portion where his face has essentially been ripped off. First right here, uh, again, it looks great. They added uh, some real uh, 5 o'clock shadow. So uh, he has real hair uh, embedded into his chin and up his jawline. That is fantastic. It's uh, realistic as hell. And again, the skin just spot on. You see some veins in there. I think the likeness, uh, which we talked about in the concept and design, is very, very accurate. I think they did a, a great job. And as you look at it close, just the subtle designs of the cheekbones. And there's the, a little bit more flesh tones, like some color in his cheeks, like there would be a human being. Check out his lips here. Pursed together, they look like real lips. Uh, somebody said uh, something inappropriate about Wonder Woman, but it will not surprise me if people are kissing Wonder Woman. They got Arnie's nose, absolutely spot on. And then look at his eyes. So they do use glass eyes, which uh, are, do you ever see someone with a glass eye or kind of a lazy eye and it looks like it's looking behind you? Uh, this one will not do that, but it's the same type of eye there. Looks fantastic, great coloring. And his eyebrows, they got Arnie's eyebrows perfect, and it is also very, uh, it's rooted in. I don't want to touch it because I don't want anything, any of it to fall out. And then check out some of the battle wounds he has over here. Again, you really can't see the endoskeleton underneath it, which I think that's a tiny bit of a miss because on his face, like under his cheekbones, you would see that. But you can see his endoskeleton on the other side. So starting at the top here, it looks like a lot of his uh, hair has actually been removed. And you see the top of his endoskeleton here, his skull. It almost looks like where his brain chip is, at least in the cool prop sideshow piece. And again, it has that fantastic uh, bloody uh, wet skin all around it. As I said, it doesn't look like it would in real life, but it does look like it does in the movies. It does, it does. And you even see some blood stain on the endoskeleton, which I think is perfect. They went that extra mile, and it looks like it's dried a little bit, and it looks wet at the same time. It's kind of hard to describe. And then you see a whole bunch of uh, red, kind of almost looks like it's pulsating skin in between that top head part, and then his cheekbone and eye. It's kind of the iconic piece of Terminator, that red eye. You see it underneath the sunglasses. I don't have any cool sunglasses to put on him. But again, some blood splatter on the actual endoskeleton itself. 
And right around the eye looks really, really cool. There's some blood and guts back there, uh, which that's an awesome addition. And then I want to look down here. You almost see, uh, you actually do see not only his jaw, but some of the pistons and mechanisms that work for the jaw. And then you see a little bit of his teeth on the inside, which again, just a, a shout out to Queen Studios. Awesome, awesome addition. And then let's look at his hair. So the classic Arnie spiked back look. And it's kind of all over the place like real hair. Uh, very, very cool. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to brush it. Uh, it's just, it's the blacks and browns. It's real, real hair. And I don't know how they root that in. If it's one piece at a time, that would take freaking forever. But another thing to note, on the back of his skull, he has like a piece missing. And I'm not sure what's going on here, why they did this. You're not going to see it from the back. And I don't remember this as being an in, in, integral part of the movie at all. But again, it has that red skin all over it. So that sums up everything on the piece. And it's kind of interesting. I actually forgot to film a summary because I was recording it live for some other people. So this is being done after the fact when I'm doing the editing. But one th of the things I wanted to focus on was the likeness. The likeness is absolutely fantastic. It's it's. No doubt that it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's no doubt it's him playing the Terminator role. And these pictures just, you know, don't do justice to what it looks like in real life. So I'm very happy with this piece. What I'd like you to comment today is what is your favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie if it is not Terminator? Uh, there are a few good choices out there. Also, one thing too, I want to show you some pictures here of some of the stuff that actually came with it. One is a certificate of authenticity, which Queen Studios always does. And I'm not gonna show you a picture of that, but you see right here it comes with some classic gloves and they actually used large playing cards to put inside the gloves to give them form, kind of weird. A huge uh, absorption packet that make sure you don't eat because it's not candy. And then last of all, they give you this brush and I got this with my Joker Queen Studio, so I expect that I'm going to get it with the rest of them. And it's actually really good for cleaning off my felt Maja cases. But those are my thoughts, guys. Really appreciate you watching. And uh, please let me know in the comments what you think of the piece and what your favorite Arnold movie is. Until next time, take care. Hasta la vista, baby.